I was a particle physicist by training. Um, I worked for three DOE national labs uh, and uh, NASA before I went into software industry during the dot-com boom and went to DC to help the government and uh, went to global market to help the global 500 companies afterwards. So I'm 2G, 2B, and 2VC. I live and work here in Silicon Valley the longest. Uh, I got asked the question a lot. Uh, how come a particle physicist become an AI practitioner? So I'd like to share with you my experience as a particle physicist where all this AI journey started. So uh, this is Fermilab. This is the Tevatron Collider of proton, anti-proton. Uh, around 1990s, this is the world's largest collider and the uh, frontier uh, tools to study the building blocks of the universe. We created the condition at the, building block, at the beginning of the universe and study uh, the component and interaction of them. Uh, there are two particle physics detectors. One's called D0, the other one's called CDF. Uh, the two detectors serve the purpose of uh, cross-checking each other for major finding so that you know, the finding can be uh, replicable. And each detector is made of, it's a marvel of modern technology. It still is today. It's six story high. The left is the D0 detector. The right is the CDF detector. Uh, the difference is that D0 doesn't have a central magnet. Uh, so the particle coming out is straight line, and that one's bended. So we can measure the energy and momentum in different ways. We have a very good calorimeter with the D0 detector without the magnet. And uh, we had the first you know, petabyte big data environment in the 1990, early 1990. And uh, because we need to collaborate and share data to analyze them, World Wide Web was invented to serve our purpose. So we usher in the data platform. Nowadays, we train AI, Gen AI. The other side, we need to build a large VAX farm. It's a cluster uh, to analyze our data. Our algorithm is everything in modern data science. Uh, we use neural network to identify particle, different particles, the parent particle and the other particles. And um, we also have uh, a lot of IoT sensors with fast electronics. So the, the channels are zillions, and we put them together. We do pattern recognition, um, and uh, we do statistical analysis in the most stringent way. We found the last quark, the top quark with seven golden candidate events out of seven trillion proton, anti-proton collisions. So you can see how you know, demanding uh, to declare discovery with confidence level with such small statistical event. It's almost like uh, the accidental rate with any aviation accidents. So this is a list. Every national lab has a major data center. Uh, Fermilab has the Feynman Center. And the left listed some computing technology uh, that was so essential for the discovery. So we pushed the envelope of high performance distributed computing. So we pioneer and exemplify IoT, big data, AI, data intensive computing, and usher in the World Wide Web. So this is the event of the top quark in our detector. And this is a schematic to explain, uh, along with the paper that can be served as a paper for people to read about it, our story of the discovery. So we couldn't see the particle. We made our TV, and we visualized them. And at Slack, we have a different machine. It's an electron-positron machine, the first word linear electron-positron detector. It's a Z boson mass. And we mass produce the boson to decay into different particle pair, quarks pair, actually, to study uh, the quantum uh, chromodynamics, for example. And also, we turned this equipment into the world's first X-ray free, free electron laser uh, in recent decade, and uh, for due purpose. 
And for NASA, we use the same technology, computing, algorithm, and data to develop digital twin to study the uh, CFD of the space shuttle surface, surface temperature, surface you know, uh, uh, fluid dynamics, and also tune our data into sky and Earth observation. Uh, the other application I had the opportunity after 911 was to help the government. So I was the CTO of the anti terrorism big data system after 911. And uh, we use all biometrics, including fingerprint and facial at that time, and also advanced technology to detect any potential threat to the US to develop the virtual border. And this is a large and substantial system of system project with major hardware and software. We piece together its multi-agency, multinational project that rely on technology we developed in national lab, in NASA and DOE, national labs. So in industry, I had the opportunity to build in 2005 the enterprise data management and BI solution practice for one of the leading consulting firm in DC area for the public and the healthcare and higher education sector. It was a fabulous space to be in. We're early, we're just data centric. We're turning our attention to tap into the data we have got from the transactional system to turn from ingest to insights. And it was a journey that started there before we heard the name of AI and uh, big data. But nowadays, the major enterprises are you know, going through the value generation and problem solving by leveraging the smart and digital technology we develop in national labs. By orchestrating the cloud big data, data science, AI, and uh, coupled with domain and frontier technology to develop visibility, optimization, and automated decision support and automation, cheaper, better, and, and faster. So it's a pyramid that's so valuable, and it has all layer of technology there. It includes major software and, and hardware. It's not just software domain in the industrial setting. And uh, it's not just uh, you know, language model, it's not just computer vision. It's the whole thing. We work with the enterprise and information architecture, and we work with major hardware and software system and orchestrate that. So it's a major technology symphony orchestra. We need to orchestrate as well, also the people process in addition to technology for various domain. So, in the industrial setting, we developed the industrial internet platform to uh, have real-time analytics and monitoring to do predictive maintenance for various you know, major industrial system. And we have major uh, engagement and active project with energy uh, to develop smart home grid with everything rolled up to the cloud and to your mobile uh, you know, application then AI on the edge to be able to inference on, with a PC, with, with the camera and everything, very low power efficiently. And uh, we turn laundry machine millions into connected machines. So we can do predictive maintenance in real time. Uh, we can see uh, the error before the customer call in. And that's tremendous cost saving and uh, customer satisfaction improvement. And you, you heard the recent news about uh, what's going on at the Newark airport about the radar system. And we developed predictive maintenance for the ADSB system that can prevent this kind of thing to happen. But it was in pilot we developed, so it needs to be rolled out. It, it's the next generation. So with major platform, the big data for enterprise platform is a major work. That's the bottom of the pyramid. And, uh, and we're moving to the cloud, and we're actively developing that with all kinds of data governance, data lineage, and uh, uh, agility and uh, flexibility for major enterprises. Uh, also, uh, 
the enterprise uh, working with the community that's developing intelligent automation for uh, aut autonomous in enterprise. And that has a lot of Gen AI, AI, agentic AI involved from the RPA world. And uh, we're also developing the infrastructure with the uh, GPU cloud and also uh, the uh, vertical AI for working closely with the main expert to develop application for them, like you know, smart healthcare, with working with uh, also dentist doctor to do automated uh, diagnostic and uh, treatment recommendation through X-ray image and 3D scan, for example, as one example. Uh, we have also students who have a gap between academia and the commercial application. So I have a lot of interns uh, who are working on capstone projects in different vertical, applying the same horizontal technology to transform mm -hmm. to the next generation of industrial revolution. Uh, so it's a major symphony orchestra. Uh, I from personally served as the violinist in analogy, then became a concert master and a conductor of chamber music and a major symphony orchestra. The AI will be not only a, a, a you know, liberal arts student, but it's gonna be a, you know, something who, who, who knows about physics as well. So we're looking forward to the next step. Thank you so much.